Hello, everyone. My name is Senator Marie Alvarado Gill, and as we observe Mental Health Awareness Month, I am honored to share with you an important initiative. The Assyrian Wellness Collaborative, in partnership with Stanislaus County Behavioral Health Recovery Services, Prevention and Early Intervention, is steadfast in its commitment to reducing the stigma of mental health and raising awareness of the significance of well being in the Assyrian community. Their approach emphasizes cultural competency and sensitivity to guarantee access to care is available when needed. The hope is to identify these barriers and work together to create meaningful solutions to serve individuals who are at risk of serious mental health issues and their families as well. Thank you for your participation and willingness to make a positive difference in our community. Welcome to another program of the Assyrian Wellness Collaborative on AGN. My name is Carmen Mora. As you have been with us through the years, you have seen us showcase um, the youth, our professionals in the Assyrian community, and talk about a whole list of things that matter to our community. One of my favorite things to do on this program is talk with our youth. Today, I have two very special young women that have joined me today, and they're going to talk about their journey, their story, and a very special accomplishment that they can add to their resume today. My special guests today are Bettina Varda and Lavinia Khoshaba. Welcome to the program, ladies. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Um, the pleasure is mine. As I mentioned in the opening, um, it is so inspiring to have members of our community born and raised in diaspora, especially in the Central Valley of California, and to really hear from you, to really let us know what it's like to grow up Assyrian, what it's like to grow up in our culture, heritage, and try to be able to um, you know, go to college, have dreams, have inspirations, and really share with us what it's like. Who wants to go first? I could go first. Okay, go right ahead. Please introduce yourself to our audience. A little bit of background about yourself and family, where you're from, where you were born, and how you and I met when it became to what you're doing at Pittman High School, or what you did at Pittman High School, because you graduated. Sure. So my name is Bettina Varda. I was born here in Turlock and I lived in the Valley my whole life. I went to school here. Um, recently at Pittman High, um, I was president of Pittman High's Assyrian American Club with its advisor, Mr. Farhadian. Um, I've been so lucky to grow up Assyrian. I think we have, as Assyrians, have such a great community and I've been so fortunate to be surrounded by that. Um, it's made my goals and just going to school so much easier by being surrounded by that. Also having our church community being Assyrian and even in school finding fellow Assyrians and being able to relate to them in that sense. So when I got the chance to be president, you know, I jumped right at it. I was so excited and thankful that Mr. Farhadin considered me for that position. And it really opened my eyes to how many Assyrians were truly at Pittman and not only Assyrians, but how many people were interested in learning about um, Assyrians and our culture in general. Um, one of something that I'm proud of that our club did was we celebrated Assyrian New Year. Um, we had a pretty big event, 100 plus people came, the mayor came, um, it was really cool to be a part of that and just see how many people showed up that were not Assyrian, that really, it just, it amazed me and it really opened my eyes to how much people want to learn. Um, also at our school, we had a cultural rally, we were able to dance um, Assyrian dances in front of the whole school in our gym and um, we got so many compliments on that and we had people that were not Assyrian join us in our dancing and learn and be excited and just keep asking questions, want to know about our food, more about our dances. And um, I think as being president, that really um, is something I have gained, the experience I've gained. So um, yeah, when you reached out to interview us about that, I was so excited to be able to share more and just, you know, be able to be someone to encourage people to join these school events, join these clubs, be more interested, ask more questions. Thank you. You're absolutely right about how exciting it is when you are telling everyone about your culture, when you're sharing it with non-Assyrians. And thank you for mentioning Mr. Isaac Fahadian because he has been on this program. He is an incredible, not just teacher, but also a mentor. And I think you'll agree with me, 
what he does, not just for the Assyrian kids at Pittman High School, but also this next topic that I want to ask you about, about the civic engagement that he introduces you guys to early on. But before we go on to that, let me ask Lavinia to join in and introduce herself and tell us a little bit about herself. Um, hello, Carmen, and hello, everybody watching. My name is Lavinia Khushabe, and I was born in Urmi, Iran, oh. but I've lived here my entire life. And um, yeah, so I was interested in the Syrian American Club. I joined it my freshman year. There was not really much to do freshman year because it was online. But then after that, sophomore, junior, senior year, we got really involved, especially with the Assyrian New Year celebrations. We started that my sophomore year, and I've been doing it every single year. And um, the part that I like enjoy the most is singing. Other people, they're kind of afraid to sing the Salman Shubachan, but like being in choir, I've been in there for eight years. I, I take that part and I do it. I'm not afraid to sing in front in front of people. And I feel like that's that was a good way for me to blend like my talents and interests in music into my culture. And I feel like that was like a really great opportunity. And like um, he let us choose like what we feel comfortable doing. Like he let us run the entire thing. He said he wants us to be the ones who are like in charge. You know what I'm saying? And that really helped because we're, we were able to do um, certain things that we knew other people, other youth would enjoy seeing on the stage. Right. We didn't want it to be boring. We didn't want people to just, you know, hear a lecture. We want them to be able to, you know, learn interesting information that they didn't know before and also enjoy it and be entertained. So I was really happy to be a part of that. Well, you achieved all of the things that you mentioned because I have seen what the Pittman Assyrian American uh, Club does. And I am so impressed every year and I know you guys graduate and move on, but there are other students that come and watch you and learn from you. But what does it leave you with? Because, you know, high school can be a very a grounded, very protected environment. But once you go on to a university, and I'm talking mostly about outside Turlock, because at Stan State in Turlock, we know that there is a large community of Assyrian students who live in Turlock or maybe attend that because of that particular reason. And there's also the uh, Assyrian studies, as I'm sure you know, we have the modern uh, Assyrian heritage project by Francis Sargis. And we also have the library, which has so many books and special uh, edition and collections of Assyrian history. So you are so lucky to grow up in an environment that enhances that for you for preservation and advancement of your heritage and culture and it gives you a sense of pride doesn't it Bettina? A hundred percent yes. Yeah uh, I want you to share with us one thing you know you talked about uh, you know where you were born and uh, what kind of a feeling you got when you're surrounded by your own community members and heritage and culture. Let's talk about uh, Mr. Isaac Farhadian and what he does with other activities that he does uh, on campus. Sure, well, I was lucky enough to have Mr. Barton as a teacher for uh, AP government and both in a Syrian club and government, he provides so much support for his students. I mean, it's unlike any teacher I've ever seen before. And not only does he put in time, but he puts in all his energy into something and he supports you 100%. Um, as being president, I 100% couldn't do anything without him. He had my back the whole way through and he trusted me in my decisions. Um, as far as outside the club, in class as well, he was just so passionate about what he teaches that it made sitting in his classroom fun and enjoyable. Personally, me, government, I'm not too educated upon that. It's not really my forte, but the way he taught it, the amount of energy he put into it, it made it enjoyable for all the students. And again, the support he puts in, he's very flexible with you. And just to know that a teacher has your back, um, it just means a lot. And I know I've spoken to other students who are not necessarily involved in his clubs, but they still feel that support. And I think that's so important to have in a teacher. And honestly, 
sometimes you're not lucky to have to find that in a teacher, but he truly is, is one of a kind. That's really all I can say. You know, he has won several awards on his academic and teaching uh, abilities and also what he does for the Assyrian club at Pittman High School. So thank you for adding uh, to that. I do know uh, Isaac and it really is important for him to hear from his students because you will leave and you will pursue your education and higher education. But what you take with you with what he has instilled in you, whether it's your heritage or um, your skills that you take with you as well with eight classes. Lavinia, let me ask you a question. You said that um, you're not shy about being in the choir. Uh, you know, you're very active. This brings me to the next level of what I wanted to talk to you about, which is being in an environment that there's so much pressure on you to perform. For some students, it's actually very uh, easy, right? Uh, some, some students don't need to be pushed in anything. They are born with the drive and they are blessed with a very supportive environment, whether it's at home or friends or really good teachers like we just talked about. But I also want to talk about uh, peer pressure. I also want to talk about, uh, and I'm sure you have experienced it, not many people want to talk about that. But one of the things that I think it's important to share, and as we go on television and as we have the platform to talk about the different issues that we experience, we have to let everybody know that what happens with peer pressure and cyberbullying is real. We want to make sure everyone watching that it's okay that they're not involved in everything, in every club. It's okay if they feel like, uh, you know, someone else will do a better job. We want everyone to feel that they matter. We want every single student to, to know that they can shine in their own way. But as we look at the statistics, ladies, uh, on campus, whether it's high school, this even goes back to junior high school, um, what kind of these cyberbullying and peer pressures have you experienced? And let me add something to it. I'm going to date myself now. When I was growing up and when I was in college, we didn't have social media. There was none of this instant information, instant images for people to process. We didn't have that. So it changes your, your ability to process instantly. Bettina, let me start with that because when we talked about you have a title and you're a president of this and you know, you're know you already knowing where you're going for your higher education, tell me if you personally have experienced what I just described or you have experienced a friend or someone you know and what were the resources or what was the support system that you had to deal with it? Sure, yeah, I've 100% dealt with peer pressure a lot. Um, going back to the rally we had where we had to dance in front of, buddy, in front of everybody, um, personally, I'm a shy person. That's not really my thing, but um, I kind of pushed myself out of my comfort zone for that. And as far as um, bullying, I mean, we would have to practice outside, sometimes practice in the gym in front of people. And we were um, laughed at a lot. We were made comments made about us, comments were made about us. Um, in those sort of situations, it was nice to have the community around me, like our club and Mr. Farhadi, and he really encouraged us. Um, it was really difficult for me to go out there and do that, but to have so many people who wanted to do it with me as far as students, that made it easier. Um, but mentally, it was still a struggle. Even if people were not in front of my face making comments, it was mentally still somewhere where I had a roadblock. And I kind of had to sit back and be like, you know what, it's okay. I'm doing this um, for a steering club. It's not a big deal, you know, like put all my worries um, away. But it was still difficult. But having that community around me was really helpful. Um, as far as college, so much peer pressure on that. Uh, I mentioned my major, um, public health promotion. At first it was biology. I had just um, recently changed it, but I felt so much, and still now, um, to know what I'm doing already, to have it all figured out. You know, a few days ago or a few weeks ago before I kind of 
um, dove into the college like route and um, learn more about it. I kind of was putting it in back of my mind. I was like, I don't have to know everything right now. I'm okay. And then I kind of dove into it and kind of smiled. And I was like, I really kind of have to know what I'm doing. And I felt a lot of pressure around me to, you know, don't waste time, pick a good job, one with you know, opportunities, pick a good major. And it was really overwhelming. I mean, I like, I feel like I couldn't breathe. Like it was um, so overwhelming. And honestly, till like till right now, I still haven't been able to fully cope with it and deal with it. Um, having my family, my sister who has experienced college graduated, um, it's been really helpful. Having some school counselors is still helpful, but still inside, I feel honestly still very overwhelmed. And I think that just comes with time and, um, you know, once I get into the groove of college, hopefully that will um, lessen a little bit. But honestly, right now, I still do feel that peer pressure around me. And even though my family is supportive, some of it is coming from them and just, you know, expectations of society in general. Absolutely. You know, we want to make sure that if there's someone watching that are feel, feeling that peer pressure, if they are feeling that that bullying that we talked about, for them to reach out, to find someone that they trust, whether it's it's an aunt or an uncle or a grandma or if they're close to someone in, in their own family to really find someone to talk to because as I mentioned if we don't have that support system if we don't have the resources there are people who can find other ways to release that pressure and we want to make sure that we can prevent and intervene uh, something that could be a bigger episode, for example. Lavinia, let me ask you, you said earlier that uh, you were born in, in Urmi, Iran. That That's incredible, but you were young and do you have any memories of that? You said you grew up here. I don't have that many memories from Iran because I left at six months old. Oh. So I li lived most of my life um, in the United States but I did go there, you know, every every few summers I would go. And um, I felt like the people there, I could relate to them more culturally because at home we still keep the same kind of Middle Eastern Assyrian values. We're not very Americanized at home, I feel like. And I grew up that way. Like I didn't really grow up to ass like assimilate with American culture as much. You know, that's very interesting that you share that uh, because even if you were six months old when you came here, but again, uh, kudos to your family, kudos to your parents for preserving the way of life, the culture, because when, when we do programming and we talk about assimilation, I don't like that word at all. Uh, I think acculturation is good, uh, you know, finding your way navigating through the system, whether it's education, employment, and just really growing into the person that you want to be, but preserving the language, the heritage, the way of life. And I love how you talk about it, Lavinia, because uh, we also know uh, kids who are maybe embarrassed, they're ashamed of it, they want to blend in. But what is really exciting that I see talking to, to young men and women your age is that you have the pride. You have um, what really has been instilled in you to be proud to do the dancing in front of people or to sing in front of people or to wear the attire. And I really wanna congratulate you on that. Yes, we are speaking English because this is a programming that is for our county. We want to make sure that everyone in Stanislaus County in the Central Valley of California we live, where we live in the United States. But this is what we show others and other cultures. As you know, this is a very diverse part of the world. But I am so proud of you because of what you choose to do, the kind of environment that you choose to be in. And as you will continue your higher education as you achieve the positions of um, whether it's academic, whether it's professional, you will take all of this with you. And that's what the survival of our nation is all about. I know it's a lot of words to say to someone who's 18, 17, 18, or 19, but this is what the conversation we should be having is all about. Don't you agree? 
Yes, definitely. I totally agree. Yeah, share with me the kind of conversations you have had, let's say, with your parents. What are they teaching you? And what what are, and this is the big word now, what are their expectations of you? I think for me, as far as culturally, um, my parents have had me very involved, especially through church and through youth groups like that. Um, I was a part of a Syrian dance group, which was so helpful to me. I found friends through that. Mm -hmm. um, but my parents, you know, they also were born, they were born Iran. So they still have these traditions in them as whether it was food, language. Um, also, one thing is that me and Lavinia both got the bilingual seal in Assyrian. So I, I owe that a lot to my parents who, um, you know, they kind of encouraged me, but they also kept me. I went to a, um, a Syrian school, Lars says it's Friday school. Um, and they, you know, sometimes it wasn't easy. Sometimes I didn't want to go on a Friday night and spend my night there, but they really did encourage me and they pushed me to do that. And so I'm very thankful for their support. And, I, you know, as I said, sometimes I didn't want to go and I was a little maybe um, a bad child for that, but they really did push me. And I really am thankful because now me and Lavinia are able, able to say like, hey, we got the seal and we're able to use that in our, you know, academic professional lives to help others so I'm thankful for that but I think yeah my parents really have pushed me um to you know be a Syrian keep these keep these uh cultural things in within me and be in that community still that's fantastic you know I have had other students who have had that seal on this program uh, this goes way back. Our, our first guest with this was John Bed Babanta, which I'm sure if you're involved with Larsa and schools, you know. He's this outstanding young man, just like all the young men and women that are involved with the church. And yes, they do Friday night. They spend their Friday night at church. But look at all that instills with you. That's the difference between being in an environment or a town that has the churches, that has all of these activities and living in a um, town or a region that doesn't. And of course, kudos to your parents and the families that always support and not just support, but push you a little bit, right? Yes, definitely. So um, in closing, uh, what I would like to ask you is uh, now that you've graduated, you're going to uh, UC Merced, Lavinia, and and uh, Bettina. You're going to uh, uh, Stanislaus State, California, Stanislaus State. So let me know what you would like to tell and share with other students that are at Pittman High School that you want to leave them with a message. Sure, I would just say get involved, whether that be with the Syrian club or anything else. And be proud of who you are. I mean, uh, for those watching that are not Syrian, I encourage you to join, if you're going to Pimmon, join a Syrian club. Um, be interested, ask questions, learn about other cultures. It's important to kind of, you know, not live in your little bubble, explore more of the world, more cultures. Um, I was lucky enough, again, that Mr. Farden considered me to be president. It was out of my comfort zone at the beginning, but I encourage you guys to step out of your comfort zone. Um, for me, it was a big step. I mean, I definitely learned communication skills, leadership skills um, by just being president and being standing in front of a classroom and talking to a group of students. So I encourage everyone to be involved in something you love and passion and that's something you're passionate about because it really helps. I mean, I took many hours to put into steering club, but I love doing it. It didn't feel like extra work. I love being able to do that. So get involved with something you love. Find your community. It was so helpful to see all the Syrians around. I, I just, I loved it. So find your community, find what you love and yeah. And Lavinia, your final thoughts to other students that will be in your shoes at Pittman High School. Um, just like how Bettina said, getting involved is key because um, you're able to interact with people that you wouldn't have otherwise interacted with unless you were both doing the same extracurricular. So um, I took on the leadership position of vice president for a Syrian club and I was also the vice president of HOSA on Pittman. And I feel like by doing that, I was able to build connections with not just other peers, but like also adults that were not a part of Pittman High School or not a part of the district, you're able to make really good connections and those connections help you get places in life because like it doesn't really matter how hardworking a person is if they don't 
have the connections, if they don't, you know, have somebody that can, you know, show them the way or give them kind of like help, I guess, like someone who knows more than them, someone who is aware of opportunities that they might not be aware of. Getting involved helps you do that because you speak to a whole bunch of other people that are involved in other things and they can let you know information that can help you be successful or they can um, help you meet people and engage with people that can help you be successful. So building those connections is very vital. And I know some people are shy. They don't want to talk to people or especially adults. Um, I, I encourage them to do that more because they have to be talkative. They have to be, you know, like engaging with others because that's the only way that they're going to really get somewhere. And I learned that the hard way because I'm shy. So I don't talk very much. I feel like, especially in Farhadian's class, he was the one who was coming to me and talking. I wasn't really like talking to him that much or going up to him that much, but building that connection really helped me because he was able to help me, you know, prepare and study to get my seal. Um, he was telling us about other opportunities, you know, like helping us um, uh, get put in the newspaper, you know, things like that. You get noticed when you have those connections. So that's my biggest piece of advice. You are absolutely right. Isaac Farhadian is truly an inspiration and an academic wonder. And every time I read the paper, you guys were in there. Isaac Farhadian was winning a new award, whether a state or national, regarding something he has done. So thank you so much for spending time with me. Thank you for sharing your ideas, your story. And I, on behalf of our entire AGN TV, I want to wish you the best. Congratulations on graduating. I would like to have you come back when you're doing something at your prospective universities that has to do with the Assyrian community, we would be more than happy to feature you and help you in any way that we can. Thank you so much. And thank you again for having us. It thank you, it's a pleasure. pleasure. Thank you, Bettina, and thank you, Lavinia. This concludes my conversation with two outstanding young Assyrian women that we hear from just like when our nation needs the inspiration and motivation for success, for preservation and advancement of our language, heritage, and culture. This is Carmen Morad. I will see you on the next Assyrian Wellness Collaborative Programming.